the creation and the expansion of capacity of black-owned businesses and, and businesses of color. Uh, for the city of Houston, when it comes to the number of businesses uh, the, uh, where the certification has been increased, Hispanic-owned businesses, black-owned businesses are leading the way. And in the last four years, the number of, of these minority women-owned businesses each year, from 2016, 2017, 2018, those, the number has increased steadily. Uh, when it comes to, and because these are the businesses that are hiring people in, in many of these uh, neighborhoods that have been underserved and under-resourced. And that's why last year, in 2018, uh, the city gave, more, for example, uh, more resources, more money to black-owned businesses than in the city's history. The other thing is workforce development. We've got a lot of talent in our, in our communities across the board, but that talent needs to be developed. And so we're working on providing them with a skill set. We established a program uh, called HBI, the Home Builders Institute. Uh, it's a, like a 12-week carpentry type of program. It's a free program, and we bring, we bring students and others into that program, provide them with intensive training, and then put them in a position where they can go and work with various contractors. There was one uh, person in particular, home flooded, um, and this was in the Acres home area, home flooded. She and her mom were trying to repair the home so they could still stay there. She heard about the Home Builders Program and saw it online. She registered. Twelve weeks later, she and some of her cohorts in that program went back to their home, uh, made some repairs. She decided, well, if we, if, if we, we can do this at, at her own home, why not form a business? She formed a business, and then she, got, uh, uh, she uh, uh, work, started working as a subcontractor with a general contractor. And then she decided, I'm doing this. Why not enroll online at Prairie View A&M uh, University? And then I went to the US Conference of Mayors in January in DC. Uh, we were talking about workforce development. I decided to take her with me because I wanted to, to introduce her to everybody else. Um, and then I was talking about it and said, look, why don't you speak for yourself? You're right here with me. She did. And she became, I was like, I was no longer there. Uh, and now she is in in her early 20s, own business, working with prime, with prime uh, contractors, going through Prairie View A&M. We've got to build entrepreneurs. We've got to start them early so they can get going. Judge? Yeah, we know that, um, it's on. Okay, all right. We know that there is an engine in the community, and that is economic opportunity. And our ability to do that has been set back for decades worth of reasons piling on each other. And so what we're doing is really focusing on that specifically at the county. We've created the first ever Office of Economic Opportunity to look at uh, tax incentives, small business incentives, workforce training, identifying the inequities and how we're going to tackle them. For starters, the county gives away um, and, and bids out uh, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of projects every year. And there never was an MWBE program at the county. And we've been pushing, and there really, it's been an honor to work with Commissioner Rodney Ellis and all my colleagues on Commissioner's Court. So we currently are undergoing the study that is required for us to be able to have that minority and women-owned business program and understanding the disparities, not only in Harris County, but making sure that the folks we appointed to the Port of Houston board, and we did a joint appointment with the mayor, I remember this was one of the key questions we asked the candidates. They're leading an MWBE program too. Same with Metro, same wherever we can extend our influence, making sure that we're catching up and giving folks that opportunity so that they can compete, so that they can get access to those programs and then build wealth in communities that trickles throughout, throughout our county, throughout our, our, our efforts. And let me just say, uh, we're expecting billions of dollars to come in, on, in um, after Hurricane Harvey to rebuild many of these communities and neighborhoods. Uh, we want to make sure that the contractors that are doing this, that they are working with minority and women-owned businesses in a very real way, that's very important. We want to make sure that they're utilizing some of that, some of that uh, talent in many of these communities because as they rebuild in these communities, we ought to be utilizing some of the people from these communities to do it. 
And then we are making sure, for example, that the employees of these subcontractors uh, have, they, at a minimum, they either get paid the prevailing wage or $15 an hour. And so we have guaranteed that with all of the Harvey dollars that are coming in, that they have to at least get paid $15 an hour or the prevailing wage. And then on the reentry program, uh, oftentimes people can't find jobs, but we have to put them in a position where they can become entrepreneurs themselves. So it's all about building economic development from on multiple, multiple levels. And when we get people and people are working or when they're entrepreneurs, they can take care of themselves. And we don't have to say, don't do, don't do. You have to give them something to say yes to. 